this is the big one. God bless you, everybody. Good morning. It's Friday morning here at Southwest Believers Convention. This is Southwest Live. It is increase day here at the convention. This morning, Brother Copeland will have the entire morning to share with you about partnership and increase and God's desire for you to have more than enough. That's good news. I'd, I'd like to hear that. And I'd also like to see my good friend, Greg Stevens. Is hey, buddy, good morning. morning. How are you this morning? I'm good. They it's just, Friday morning. They, they opened just, the doors early. They did. The folks just That's ran by started. us a minute ago, and it was a commotion. And so, so uh, you don't have to do that. You don't no, have to fight you, the. No, uh, you, we want you to. We would love for you to come down here and do that. But if you're not going to, we want you to be right where you are. <laughs> How we, are you this you morning? Fight for a seat yeah, on your couch. Yeah, you fight for a chair. seat on your couch. Yeah, or, or, <laughs> Whoever pays the no, bill sits on the couch. Listen, that's yeah. that's a reality at my house. Is it really fight oh, for a yeah. room? You're in my spot. Yeah, yes. your anyway, boy. Yeah. Let's get back to it. <laughs> today. What's happening? You know, uh, every Friday at our meetings is increase day, uh, and we set aside this time because it's very important to Brother Copeland. It's very important to him to uh, talk to his partners minister to the partners and give people a sense of what partnership with this ministry is like. Here's something that I, I want people to understand. Yeah. As I did that tour last night through the television truck, yeah. every single person here is a partner That's as well. That's exactly right. We're, when That's we're talking exactly to you about right. being a partner, we're partners. That's exactly right. So that's how much we believe in, yeah. in this message and this ministry. And, the mission. That's absolutely the truth. That is absolutely so the truth. So in a little while, I'm going to the partner experience over here. Okay. That has the history. Yeah. And be talking to some Oh, and you've got a really good guest this morning. You you guys are really going to enjoy this guest. This is a partner that uh, took the principles that this ministry teaches and has a business that is just blowing the doors off. I mean, it's really great. And so. before that, though, you're going to be. Oh, I've well, got a great pastor. I'm praying for on. you. Yeah, pray for me. <laughs> now, people come from all over the world and all over the country for this meeting, and a lot of them bring their families. If you've ever wondered what that looked like, Take a look at this. Okay, we're on our way. My name is Sydney and I like coming here every single year. My favorite speakers are Todd White and Michael Giuliano. Todd White spoke yesterday and he did an amazing job. He talked about just listening to God and I was listening. At first I didn't hear anything, but then he was just like, just listen, be quiet. You don't talk, just listen. And I didn't talk and all I heard was, I want you. Like he said, I want you, Sydney. And I was like, okay. And I was not no one ever told me that before, so it was really awesome. Hi, my name is Jude, and I, this is my first year at 1440. My favorite part is coming to see your friends and meeting new people from all over the world. And one of my favorite preachers so far is Chris Estrada has spoken how God delivered him out of, the, out of this addiction. Really powerful how he does, says that. And Todd White, the fire tunnel was really fun and I can't wait for next year. Hi, my name is Caitlin Ward, and this is my last year in 1440, and I'll be heading off to ORU in a couple of days, actually. And my favorite speakers this week have been David Wiston and Chris Estrada. They have really impacted my life and have just given me a word to further my future at ORU. Oh my gosh. It I would say that's a typical family, but if you know these guys, you know they're pretty atypical in a lot of ways. Well, you met the kids in that video. Now, the one we didn't see is this one right this here. Right here Introduce yes. this one. This is Zoe Ward. This is Zoe. Zoe Victoria. Zoe Victoria. Chopper and Kristen Ward are with me this morning. They are associate pastors of Rock City Harvest Church in Sherwood, Arkansas. Did I get that right? That's correct. Wow. It's a mouthful. It is a mouthful. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I don't, even, I don't even know if most of you know where Sherwood, Arkansas is, but it's probably a pretty place, right? Very beautiful, yes. yeah. very beautiful. It's just a suburb of Little Rock, Arkansas, about 12 miles. Matter yeah. of fact, I was telling someone this morning, 
Our church is five miles from the end of I-30. Really? You get on I-30, head east, and when it ends, just take the exit and take five so miles. So it's not the end of the earth, but you can see it from there. <laughs> Pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've been in ministry a long time. You're, you, you grew up in a family that travels in yes, ministry. Sir. Uh, and then you met this lady who is just oh, man. a wonderful woman of God. And you've Aww. been in ministry together. Thank you. Uh, but KCM's had an impact on your life. Talk about that. Majorly. <laughs> Majorly. We, we started coming to the Branson Victory Campaign years ago. Yeah. And um, it was just her and I. And then we always wanted to come to Southwest. Yeah. Of course, with the kids being younger and things, and they weren't. We thought, well, when she gets old enough to go to Super Kids, we'd come, but for some reason we kept having children. <laughs> and so finally, when we, that happens. Yeah, 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 we'll leave that there. Uh, but we finally, when we came one year, everybody was old enough for Super Kids in 1440, about three and a half years ago for our first time to yeah. Southwest. And I'm telling you, my life is never the same. I remember that first morning walking in, and I was sitting on the far right, and uh, I literally remember feeling the anointing of God hit, and I was like, I'm here. Yeah. Because it's one thing to watch it online. Right. It's one thing to watch it on, on television. But when you're yeah. in the atmosphere, it's totally yes. different. it is totally different. Yes. And that year we were only staying for a few days and we made a decision after that. Next time, anytime, we're coming for the yeah. whole week. Yeah. Because it's not, to us, it is not just coming to a meeting. Yeah. This is our summer family yeah. vacation. It is. It yeah, is. it is. If and we even considered not coming, these kids yeah. would let us have it. <laughs> they would not be happy. And, and most people would say, they would look at that and say, oh my gosh, four kids coming down to Texas that whole thing, but it's not as hard as you may think, is no, it? It's, it's not. It's easy thing, is Okay, it? if you can't come when you have kids this age, you just need to go in the auditorium oh, come on. and right. see the back section with people that have small children, children. and babies. I'm like, yes. wow, they're sacrificing so much. It's so easy to come when they're this age. Exactly. And then they get fed. And the thing about it is, uh, and I'm gonna brag on you a minute, the thing, when you watch that video, the thing about it that represses me is the depth, the spiritual, maturity and depth that your kids have. I'm gonna cry. Because you've invested in them. Yeah. All these years. These kids are world changers. I agree. Uh, you're not gonna get an argument here. Yeah. Uh, every, yes. The, usually the last Wednesday night of the month at our church for the last two years, we have what's called Next Generation Night. It's where we yeah. have young people of our church. And these three oldest, this one's coming up next time. Yeah. These three oldest, they'll take about five to 10 minutes to speak. And I'm telling you, and, yeah. and some other kids in and our church. And they minister with you in church. They minister at church, yeah. they sing. And I mean, they can flat out take the word and preach yeah. it. Yeah. Summertime, you're supposed, kids are out doing hang with their friends. Yeah. Here's what it was, it, it's any day, it's, it's, it could be this way. I get to looking for one of them. The other day I was looking for Sydney. And I go back in her room, they got a TV, they got Netflix, I open the door. She's sitting in her bed or leaning in her, laying in her bed with her Bible open, yeah. with highlighters, taking notes, studying the word in the middle of a, a summer yeah. afternoon. We're blessed. Yes, you are. Blessed. And, that, and part are. of that's because Mama probably spent a lot of time with them, you know, over the years. <laughs> Absolutely. And thank, and thank God for that. So what have you gained from being at these meetings all these years? I know the ministry, being in ministry, you know, being a pastor has its own challenges and rewards. Yes. More, more rewards than challenges. But being in ministry and then coming to a meeting like this, how refreshing is it? It's very refreshing because if you think about it, as pastors, you're constantly giving out to your people. And as a mom as well, it's a double because you're always giving out yeah. to your children. And when we come to a place like this, we're able to sit and relax and be fed ourselves. Yeah. And I mean, granted, yes, I do feed myself every day. I, every morning I get up and I read the word and I study. But when you come in here and it's a community effort and yeah. you're getting fed, getting fed all day long, it's just so refreshing for the rest of the year and the next year because you're always giving out. And so at some point you gotta take a break and fill yourself back up. Yeah. And that's what I get when I come here. Now, you had a special thing this week where <laughs> you showed up and all of a sudden they said, hey Chop, why don't you come stand on the platform and sing with our praise team? Oh, what a dream come true, <laughs> honored. I mean, yeah, that, that was, wow. That was something. I literally yeah. came to this meeting, wasn't expecting that, and that ball began to roll, and That's I was like, awesome. praise, I mean, yeah. that is an honor. I mean, to be in this atmosphere is one thing, but to, sh to be on the same stage that Brother Copeland, Sister Copeland, yeah. that, that Duplantis and all these guys, that was, and, and to share the stage with those worship leaders. Yeah. Sure. I mean, They're David amazing. Ellis and that well, whole I've been group, here a long time, they never asked me to do that. <laughs> so it must be something special about what you got. Now you do actually have a really good voice, well, thank but you. It, the yes, funny thing is, uh, if, if, I don't normally do this, but if you follow Chopper on Facebook, he started. they just started this thing recently with he and these two oldest. 
<laughs> Just name that name that tune. Name thing. that tune. Yes, name the, that the tune. The guy, the guy is really talented. Can play. How many instruments can you play? Uh, several. If it has so, strings, mostly. <laughs> yeah. So they do this name that tune on Facebook every week now, or at least every other week. Uh, and <laughs> and we did it even coming down the road this week. And it's a riot. It's it is. a riot. It's How'd fun. you come up with that? Uh, well, one night I was we sitting at the piano. At after, we, we do it at home. Yeah, we do it at home. home. And we'll do it in the car. And we'll, we'll sometimes, she'll grab her iPhone, hook it to the car stereo, and she'll start an intro and a song. We're like, okay, that's this person. We try to see how fast we can get it. And so one night after church, we did it around the piano. And yeah. it's just fun. But the thing is, is I've got to learn some different songs and genres. Right. Because everybody's guessing them Because now. people are starting to guess them. And that's why you've got these two, because yeah. they, can add, they can add a lot. They to can add, oh, yeah. oh, they can add oh, a lot. And this one plays drums oh, at my the goodness. church. He is a drumming machine, 13 years old, started playing when he was four, and literally I can say this about him, he could set in with any band, anywhere, yeah. and sit right there and keep up and, and add to. Yeah. I, don't, I told him, I said, son, if you stink, I'm gonna tell you you stink, I'm not gonna <laughs> lie to you. And there's been days he stunk, right. but he's anointed and God's blessed him. And the whole family is that way. Thank you all for being here this morning. Honored Thank to you be for here. having I, us. I told these guys before we started, if they ever wanna get rid of these kids, send them to my house, I will take all <laughs> four of these kids I haven't told my wife that yet, but I'll take all four of them. But listen, this ministry is, is what it is because of the partners and friends that we have. Greg Stevens is with a partner this morning that is such a blessing, and you're gonna enjoy this. Here's Greg. I'm across the hall over in the partner experience, and I'm talking, if you've ever heard of the Elite CX team, you know this guy, Charlie Bollinger, welcome. Yeah, thank you. He has been a longtime partner, I guess, since what, the 1980s? 1980s, yes. Yeah. And he is, if you want to see the consummate businessman, here he is. He's in the crane business, the cattle business, exotic uh, deer and animal business. Tell me about you're going to present a little while about the the CX team and, and some things working on that new plane. But tell me a little bit about how you took these principles that you learned here into business. Yes, uh, in the 80s, uh, I wasn't in the crane business. I wasn't in any of these businesses. But we started listening. A friend of ours gave us a tape, a cassette tape back then. And I started listening to Kenneth Copeland in this ministry. And he started talking about what you say, what you speak, the word. And of course, even back then in the 80s, you know, we were going into the oil field business and things had gotten kind of tough in the 80s. So it was a slow time, but I started speaking what he was preaching. You know, you got to say what you believe. You got to be able to see it. You got to speak it. Charlie, and anybody, anybody can, anybody can do this, can't they? Yes, yeah. So, so even though the circumstances around us didn't look that great, I kept speaking. It's getting better. It couldn't be better. It's all going to be great, and it totally changed everything in my life. You know, the principles and what they've been preaching here this week. You know, going back to the basics is very important because it kind of wakes you up and it, and it just made a difference. And people was like, they were like, how can you say it's great? Actually, when you were going through some struggles, because we were going through some struggles. And I think we all have some struggles in life because Satan always comes. But when we started speaking the word, it just totally changed everything. Things started turning around. You know, I got prophecies. God was speaking to me about what was going to happen. And when I heard it, it was like, you know, other than being attached to this ministry, it was kind of hard to believe. But this made me believe, and it just changed our whole life. And getting into the faith principles, it's just changed everything in our life to the point that in business, you know, you use it spiritually, you use it in business, and using the godly principles that they teach here, and they've got such a great group that teaches here. I mean, it's just, they, they got a great balance of what they teach. 
But using those godly principles in business has just brought our business and, and it just continues to grow and grow and grow. So I don't know what we would have done if it wasn't for this ministry and what it's been to us because it's totally changed our life. And I said it on stage last year, you know, God brought us, I have a picture of an old, old trailer that we lived in way back in the 80s. You know, I've been married 36 years. So we, we started, but it was paid for. And, you know, I've always been a tither and I've always been a giver, but I realized through all these things, if you use the basics that they're teaching this week, it's only gonna grow. So how would that person that's out there that has a small business or, or, or whatever, or struggling and, and they hear this, how do they do it? How, how'd you do it? Well, first of all, you have to speak the word. You have to believe it and you have to see it and you have to stay in the word. Or, you know, one of the things that I've realized over the years, we brought many people to this convention, but not many of them stay. But they also don't see the results that we've seen. If you stick with it, you got to be consistent and you're going to see it happen because everything that we do, even though you walk through some deserts, it just keeps growing. You know, you hear people, you hear people say, I tried that. That's the problem, isn't it? They tried it. Well, you can't try. You know, that's one thing I learned from Kenneth. You don't try. The first meeting I came to here, he said, you know what, the people that tried to come, they're not here. And I never forgot that. So you don't try at anything. You have to be a doer of the word, not a tryer. Putting the word first in, in every aspect of your business and that has made the difference. You know, you said something about the prophecies and the different things that sounded impossible. God will always call you from your destined place, not where you're at. I was reminded of Gideon. He called Gideon a mighty man of valor while Gideon was hiding. And that's what he's done with you. He called you from your destined place. Charlie, thank you, sir, so much for what you do with the Elite CX team and, and with this ministry and being so faithful for all of that. We truly appreciate you, and I know the partners do too. Tim, I'm going to kick it back to you, but first, I want you to watch this little segment about Mike Barber, our next guest. Watch this. Well, I am joined now by our good friend and partner, Mike Barber. Good morning. Always good morning to you, my friend. <laughs> yeah. I told Mike, I said, remember, this, we have a live mic. You got to be careful. If the guy played football, he's in prison. You never know. Sometimes. Hey, and I've been hitting the head. And too you've been many hitting times. the head a lot of times. Uh, actually, we were recently uh, in a prison with Mike uh, at the Beto unit, not too far from here. Uh, Brother Copeland spoke. And at the end of that service, uh, I was down there with a camera crew and would like to get Brother Copeland as he comes off the platform just to get his thoughts on uh, what transpired there and an opportunity to speak to his partners. Well, in the middle of that interview, I was interrupted. I want you to take a look at this. <laughs> partners, I just want you to know, this ministry touches about at least 1,800 to 2,000 inmates' lives that ask Jesus Christ into their heart every single month. And you know why that's possible? Because of all of you that give to this man and his awesome wife and they turn around and bless our ministry. So every prison that Mike Barr Ministry walks into, yeah, every amen. soul for the kingdom of God, you're found guilty because you give to this ministry. And I just want to say amen. thank you, Kenneth and Gloria. Y'all are awesome and your partners. You're the foundation, the backbone of it Praise all. Praise God. God bless you. Now the thing about that, Mike, and you and I were talking about, that was not rehearsed. That came out of your heart. That you were talking to the partners of KCM and you were telling them, Absolutely. without you, there, this does, what we do does not happen. I was standing there. You don't interrupt Kenneth Cole. No, you can interrupt okay. me all day. Yes. <laughs> but you know, this is our 32nd year of full time. 
since being delivered from the NFL. <laughs> and for at least now 28, 29 years, Kenneth and Gloria has been the pivotal blessing to the Mike Barber Ministries. <laughs> and I want and, and I said, I'm gonna do it. And I stepped in there like you said, it's yeah. a surprise. And the few minutes that I have here, yeah. I want to make it crystal clear. Because you give honor where honor is due. And it, you know, true joy is lived from the inside. Sure it is. And we are able to bring true joy to thousands of inmates. Like just for an example, this year, already this year, up to the first six months I'm talking about, we have ministered face to face. These are the ones that sit in our chairs to over 22,000 inmates. And these are prison officials doing the county. This is not us doing really? the county. Okay. They tell us. That's pretty accurate. That's not counting the cell to cell yeah. part of it. Uh, we've given out over 22,000 bars of soap. Yeah. We bless them with, with that. Material, ex, yeah. et cetera. Uh, why are we able to do it that way? Because Instead of just me going in by myself right. and a handful because most prisons, they can't handle the crowd that we get. Sure, yeah. Why? Because Kenneth and Gloria made a commitment to the Mike Barber Ministries. If we have to do it ourselves, quote unquote, yeah. we'll just do it. And they have been faithful, and I'm gonna be honest with you. Not everybody has been, have they? I've had a few big name ministries. When I first came out of the league, I was very popular. Yeah. Prison ministry, right. and I get all these calls, hey Mike, we wanna help you and go in with you. And I took them in and nothing. nothing. They did their TV show, <laughs> didn't mention my name or nothing yeah. to get them a shot. And so my wall was up. Yeah. I don't want to meet another. But there was something about Kenneth. And <laughs> yes, I go on TBN yeah. as a guest. Yeah. And I always asked, who's the host? And for whatever reason, I know now, I didn't ask. And I walked into the building and there's Kenneth and Gloria. I said, oh no, I don't, nothing personal, but I, I, I don't, I don't, you know. Yeah. But the second they saw me and they put their arms around me, I knew yeah. Yeah. they were different. You know, I've often wondered, I've never asked you this before. You, you've mentioned you played in the NFL, had a very successful career. You're a rock star at Louisiana uh, Tech where you went to college. They love you there. Yeah. Uh, people that come out of the NFL and out of sports, they usually go into you know broadcasting or they, you know, they sell insurance or they do something that's very lucrative. Yeah. Prison ministry. When did God lay that on your heart and why did you do that? <laughs> I owed a friend a favor. He said, Barbara, the only way you can pay me back is you got to go into prison. It took him almost two years to talk me into it. I finally went and I was overwhelmed at their response. And uh, all I can tell you is that it changed my life. Yeah. And I said, you know, I was going to be a pro professional coach, football coach. There you go. <laughs> and from that moment on, I knew that my will in my life, God's will in my life yeah. was in prison. And, and we're, I, we're watching never it. We're watching back. the tent go up. It's a big deal, isn't it? Hey, you see that tent, yeah. partners? Yeah. Guess who paid for that? Uh, let me guess. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. Kenneth and Gloria and their Copeland. Partners. <laughs> we have, we have 2,000 chairs. Yeah. Because I told the Lord, my congregation is not going to sit on the ground or on the floor. Right. Like most do. Yes. I need chairs. Who do you think paid for those chairs? Hmm. Partners yeah. with Kenneth Couple Ministries. Electricity in prison is poor. Yeah. We'd be running our program. You have to have a generator. Right. We needed a generator, not just a generator, but I've got a generator that can light up half a community. <laughs> <coughs> Guess who paid for that? Huh. I've got big box truck that I can put my heavy tents on and, and the poles and chairs and et cetera. And I've got a, a Ford 350 truck and yeah. another one ton that has to pull all of this equipment. It's not just me going in. Yeah. Who do you think did that? Huh. Exactly. Huh. And the thing is, 
They've never questioned my calling. They've never put their nose in my business. Yeah. They trust me and they believe in me. And it's been the most awesome partnership. Yeah. And the thing is, you know, I've been stuck on stupid a lot of my years. <laughs> And they love me. And he, they love they you through it. They forgive me. <laughs> yeah. And just yeah. own up, go forward. Right. And, uh, you know, how much more blessed could I be? And yeah. I want all the partners to know that when you give yeah. to Kenneth and Gloria, yeah. you are truly given to the kingdom yeah. of God. Yes, you are. His righteousness yep. and souls for the kingdom That's, of God. Well, let's, speaking of souls, there's a lot of... When you go in those prisons, there's ministry to the masses, but there's also ministry one-on-one. -on -one. Just talk about what a typical weekend looks like uh, for you at one of these prisons. Well, the backbone of our weekend is cell to cell. So we have volunteers. They are the backbone. And we'll go, on, we'll go in on a Thursday. Everything's already set up on Wednesday. And we basically have five to six major services, but in between, our volunteers will go cell to cell even into the least of them. The Cofield yeah. unit in Texas, for an example, biggest prison in the state of Texas, over 4,000 inmates in there. They have the largest population of ADSEG. These are men that never get out. Yeah. And they've just called and asked, Mike, how many volunteers can you put together? We want you to go to that 1,000 inmates yeah. that never get a visit yeah. or anything. And so, that's what Mike Barber Ministries is all about. And, and, the, and the warden and the prison officials tell this, we average 72% of the total population that we reach and we touch wow. by handshake, by hug, yeah. by worship, by the word of God. Wow. And there again, all that is possible. We that's, have others that support us. That's yes. nearly three quarters of the inmates. Exactly, but it's because as Kenneth has told me point blank, Mike, if I got to do it myself, we'll do it. Because obviously yeah. it takes money to do that. And your wife and, is a big help to you as well, isn't she? Uh, my wife is absolutely amazing. There, there she a, is. Such I, a great How did a guy support. like you wind up with? We're truly the beauty and the beast. <laughs> 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 and uh, so thankful yeah. and and uh, I, I, I am so blessed. Uh, I don't understand it at times how I've been so <laughs> blessed, but I'm so thankful that I am. And I couldn't say enough yeah. about Kenneth and Gloria, their faithfulness. You never have to question or yeah. doubt it. Yeah. And we are today who we are because yeah. of Kenneth and Gloria. And it's pretty much, it's their prison ministry. And so as he's preached so well, partners, every time we go into prison, you go in with us. That's exactly because right. Because you gay. That's exactly right. And you're making a difference yes. for the kingdom of and God. And they need to get that reality. The partners need to understand that reality. That's right. And, and a lot of them do, because that's why they give to the ministry, because yeah. they know the twice on seed. And let me just explain to you what KCM does. 10% of everything that comes into Kenneth Copeland Ministries goes back out into ministries that we call twice sown seed. Ministries that are doing what Mike's doing. Ministries that are going places that Places we've been, places we've never been, and places we may never go. But it's called twice sown seed because you sow into us, and we turn around and sow it into other ministries. And that's why it's so important. And that's and you why know this what, is Tim, a big deal. I've already got 2019 completely booked. Wow. And you know how I can do that? How? It's because of the faithfulness of the partners of Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Of Kenneth Copeland Ministries. My God. Because you know, you're only as good as you were. <laughs> yes, right. And you don't want to tell a prisoner, yeah. Yes, I'll be there and then not, not do show it. up. Yeah. And I'm able to do that. Wow. Without hesitation because of KCM. Uh, we're going to invite Greg back in here. And, uh, you know, the one thing I like about Mike, you know, he's not afraid. You know, he's, he's gone in to talk to the worst of the worst. But by the time he and his team leave, they're not the worst of the worst anymore. That's right. They're serving the best of the best. That's right. That's right. So That's I'm right. a little nervous here. I'm a former football official I'm standing oh, you are. holding number 86. <laughs> Don't you dare do that. Don't you dare do that. I'm still under construction. There you, go, there, you go, there you go. Okay, let's pitch it to something. <laughs> oh, I love this guy. I love what he brings to this program. Now, Pastor Terry is coming up here in just a moment. And again, as she has done all this week, she's going to lead us in prayer. She's going to listen to the Holy Spirit. So whatever he says she's going to do and whatever he tells us to do, we're going to do, right? Right. We appreciate you guys so much. 
Uh, we're going to get it into the service now. This is Tim Fox, Mike Barber, Greg Stevens reminding you, God loves you and we love, we love you. you. And love you. Thank Jesus you. is Lord. Lord.